Merry Christmas! <laughs> Brand. <laughs> I've got a fun night for us tonight. I'm really excited. I've been looking forward to this. Somebody else is getting on. Hey, Lorraine. So glad to have y'all. Hey, I'm just curious about something too while we're, we've got a little bit of time, a couple more minutes before we start. I know we have people that are on East Coast, West Coast, and different spots. I was also thinking about, in addition to this one on Thursday evening, I thought about doing like a coffee time, maybe on a Thursday morning. I don't know if that would work with anybody or even maybe a Saturday morning. I know Saturday sometimes everybody's wanting maybe sleep in, so I wouldn't want to distract from that or spending time with family. But just think about that. That's something that, um, or what you think, if it might help people that's maybe on the west coast now coffee with me is not going to be real freaking early because i'm not one person but you know i'm thinking something maybe like around maybe nine on the east coast somewhere in there so think about it well we're going to go ahead and get started uh, i've really been looking forward to today and just spending time with y'all and i was trying to think of all the different things that we could talk about and that we could better ourselves and get some adventure and excitement in our lives, I thought this one topic kept coming up to me and I'd, I'd kind of go away from it. Uh, and I know our topic says drop the weight. This this is going to be, we're going to talk about that in over about maybe three to four live events because it encompasses so many different facets of who we are. Because to me, that's the first thing we have to do before we can fly. And I want y'all to fly. I want your life to be fulfilling. I want you to reach your destiny and your purpose for which you were created. And just enjoy life. And I know that's what you want too. But this one topic kept coming back to me over and over that this is what we need to do first. And it's something, everything that I'm sharing, I'm doing. I've either done it, doing it in the process. But this particularly is something that... I'm doing and I've been doing for years and it is very liberating and it is forgiveness. We're going to talk about how unforgiveness weighs us down and I know a lot of times people will talk about things like forgiveness but they won't really tell you well what does that mean or how do I do that? How do I forgive somebody that's done such horrible things to me and how do I let go of it? You know, it's not like we ever, like, truly forget, because we remember. If things are, we're hurt, things happen to us, yeah. I mean, it's written. It's written right in our heart. It's in our brain. I mean, it's, it's just something that we carry with us. But we can let go of that pain. So that's what I want to talk about, is how we can get the pain off of whatever the event, the occurrence. And for some people... And I do believe a lot of people are going to end up watching this video. This video is very important, what we're talking about. And I want you to, if you have to go and watch it again, because I want you to be free, totally free. And there's such power in forgiveness. I, about maybe 10, 15 years ago, I had read a book on forgiveness. And it talked about the different ways we forgive. And I was uh, maybe liberated in the fact that forgiveness is not instantaneous. It's, it's not for me. And for some of the experiences that I've had, and I, I would say for y'all too, the trauma had happened over such a long period of time. It wasn't something that I could just say, oh, I forgive this person. 
it's something that I had to work on and I had to work on and work on and I didn't want to work on really because sometimes I just want to stay mad you know I, I want to be mad I want to punish you or I want to get back at you and I mean I know that I am being very real but that is how we feel when somebody has really done something horrendous to us or some of our loved ones we we want revenge we want that but revenge never brings any sort of closure um, there's definitely justice and there needs to be justice and we have to hope that whoever the offender is that they do become sorry for what they've done but you know sometimes you know that just doesn't happen for some people because they don't even think that they've done anything wrong they don't think that there's anything wrong with what they've done but I do believe that the very first step to what we are accomplishing and what we are all achieving the first thing is forgiveness so we're gonna break it down we're gonna talk about it and there are gonna be some actions that I want y'all to work on this week or whenever just work on it along however you want to do it but I'm gonna tell you what I do and you can use it or not but I think it will be very powerful if you do I know a lady know her very well an older woman that in her younger years while she was married and had small children her husband was very abusive the abuse was verbal he was very mean he would make a lot of money he always carried around a lot of money in his pocket but he wouldn't give it to her to care for their children she had to go out and work, which I don't know how she did it. He had many affairs. Sometimes he would, one time he went to get something at the grocery store. He didn't come back for about a week. That was the kind of person that he was. He was also physically abusive to her as well as the verbal and everything else that he did. He drank, and when he drank, Sometimes there would be knives and guns involved. And so you can just let your imagination go there as to what that might look like. So she lived in fear. She lived in fear for whatever time period until she got free of him. And she did. They ended up getting a divorce. But even after they were apart, the fear and the feelings, the anger and the resentment that she had was still with her. In fact, it was so strong that she would have nightmares. She would have nightmares that he was coming after, he was coming to get her, and it was just a part of her life she just couldn't get free of. So one day in her older age, her mature years, she was watching somebody speak on the power of forgiveness. And she thought, you know, I've, I've dealt with this for so long, what can it hurt to do what he said? And he said to just say, I forgive you. So she stood up in her living room at home while she was watching the TV. And she just said, and she named the, the, the ex-husband. And she said she felt something almost like come out of her, like a dark, heavy weight. And she has been free from that dead weight that was holding her down. She's been free from that. Now, that didn't change what he had done. What he had done was terrible. And to this day, I don't think he's ever said he's sorry. And he probably never will. But she does not have that holding her down anymore. Now, when I'm telling this story, this was probably, I'm thinking 30 to 40 years had gone by that she'd carried this around with her. And the nightmares, really, they had went on that many years. But she's free from that today. And forgiveness is very powerful if we do want to be free and we want to move forward because I do believe that there is wonderful things waiting out there for y'all you have a destiny you have something you were created for you have a purpose and you will fulfill that purpose but we instead of having those chains of forget unforgiveness holding us down which I have dealt with that too we've got to get that off of us so that we can fly because I do, I want to fly and I want y'all to too. I want us to have some fun and I want us to live life wide open in every moment. You know, even when we're surrounded by chaos or even dark times, because you, we've all gone through with this pandemic, it's affected us all in different ways, right? So even in the midst of that, we still can have joy. We still can have good things. It's all in how we look at it. 
and it's all in what we do. And that's why I started this group. I, I want us to be able to rise above our circumstances, above the chaos, above the distractions, and achieve our purpose in life. That's what I, I hope that we can do. So I wanted to talk about how we're going to do this or what I do. <clears throat> For years, after I had read the book on forgiveness, I started making notes of people that I had hurt. And I just felt like I needed to get forgiveness from them. Now, it's... For me, I'm just saying I made a list, and I would like for you guys to make actually two lists. You can do it on you can do it on your electronic device if you want. I would recommend paper, but I would ask that you put this paper somewhere that is for no other eyes, that nobody else sees it. It's totally private, it's totally personal, so that you can truly write down the things that have hurt you and how maybe you've hurt others. So two lists. One list will say, or one sheet will say, uh, the people who have hurt me. And you need, when you go through this, you need to be in a place, an environment that is quiet, where you can focus, where you can think. And I'm just gonna warn you, sometimes going through this, it can stir up pain and emotions in yourself, within yourself. So be in a place that you can be real and you can be a little bit vulnerable, but just make sure that whatever you write this on, nobody can ever get it or see it or whatever, however you want to do it. I do it on paper, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So write one list that says, people who have hurt me, and if you even want to write down something about what happened, if, that's, if you need to write it, some people do, to get it out, write it. And then the other sheet, people I've hurt, and write that down. So what I do, and I do this um, sometimes just periodically, if I feel like there are things clogging up my life and I need to address, I will get out a piece of paper, and I just did this actually uh, about two or three months ago. And actually, I've done it as part of my, I guess, health regimen. Because really, we have to have a healthy mind we need to have a healthy soul, and we need to have a healthy body. And all of those are intertwined, and they all affect, because the weight of our inside trauma or unforgiveness, it affects our physical being. And I've even heard stories, true stories, of how when people went through some of these exercises, they actually lost weight. They lost weight doing it. Because we do have a tendency of holding on, holding things in our gut um, that we don't release. And I know that may be a little deep or maybe woo-woo, but you know, really, we hold things in and we all hold it in differently. Some people hold tension like up here and stress. Some of us grind our teeth at night because of stress. Me, my stomach will start hurting if things get really stressful. So I'm recommending that you write this on a paper or on your digital device, however you want to do it. Write it down. And I would say, let's do, let's do the list first, people who have hurt me. Let's go through that first. And write down, even think back, think back to like when you were in third grade, whatever. And uh, like um, maybe you were made fun of because you got glasses and the kids at school made fun of you. Well, that hurts. And you know what? You think, you know, that's not bothering me really now. But if you remember it, it's bothering you. It's still there. It could be maybe a guy, maybe a guy that rejected us in high school. Or it could be a job promotion we were passed over that we really deserved. It could be an absentee father or maybe a mom who was very critical of us. Or sibling, some type of sibling rivalry. I mean, don't we all have little things like that? Or maybe something that our best friend did to us. And we never would have thought. We never would have thought that would have happened. But it did. It did happen. It was very real and it was, it was painful. An ex-spouse. Whatever it is, start writing it down. And I tell you, when you start this, it's going to start flowing. 
you will start being be able to just write all these little things down. And this may take you, you may be able to sit down and really just pour it out. But every, I would say do it even over a couple of days because things will start coming to you. It will start coming to you and just have that list somehow with you and then begin to write your list. And I can tell you what I do. After I get my list made and I'm totally alone, I'm totally by myself, I will take that list and each one, each event or person or however, I will go down through each one and I will say, and I say it verbally, I say it out loud, and I would encourage you because you need to hear yourself say it. I say, I forgive my sister. I forgive my friend for what she did to me. Or I forgive this person I did business with that stole from me. I forgive them. And go down through your entire list. And when you get to the end and you have done, you've said this and you've put time in doing this, then I want you to do one of two things. If you have a fireplace, it's wood burning, which mine is gas going on right here. But if you have a fire, I want you to burn that list. Just totally burn it and just release it. If not, take that paper and shred it. Just rip it up, you know, enjoy just tearing it up. Little shreds, you know, every little thing. Just totally tear it up, shred it, and throw it away. Now, does that mean that you're not going to have some feelings still come up about that? It doesn't mean that. You, you may, and really even doing this may bring up feelings that maybe you've tried to suppress. You've tried to push it away and forget. So you'll have to maybe work through some things, but that's okay. You will get through this. You're going to do this. The next list that I want you to do is people I've hurt. And so this is something that's ongoing for me. I do this and you know what? I offend people sometimes. I don't mean to, but I do. My mind sometimes, my mouth just gets ahead of my mind, you know, or Maybe I'm aggravated and I'm having a day, you know, you're being aggravated here, you're being aggravated, you're being pulled this way and then somebody driving too slow on the road or whatever. And I offend people, offend my family, I offend my husband, uh, maybe a friend. So I start writing down people that I have hurt and I know what I've done. And if possible, if possible, I go to them. Now, sometimes you're not able to. Some, there are some situations you cannot go to that person. And I'll give you an example of that. I have an ex-husband, and he did some things that really hurt me, as in all marriage. And But I also did things, too. I did things that I shouldn't have done. So I don't have a relationship of any kind with him anymore. I'm remarried, so I would not go to him. And I have, I have really spoke out that I forgive him, and I do believe we have moved on. In fact, I know I actually, uh, I had a dream because I wondered, I had been wondering for a while if I had ever gotten over that relationship because there was uh, physical abuse during that relationship, and I wanted to make sure I didn't hold anything. I didn't have anything tying me back, keeping me from where I'm going in life, and I wasn't totally sure, but one night I had a dream, and it was very real. I don't know if any of you are dreamers, but this one was like I was there. And I saw him. I saw his new wife. And I was able to go to them and hug them and, and say, I hope that y'all are doing well. I hope that things are going great. And I just have the best of wishes for for you both. And But I had the feeling inside of me that that really meant and came into agreement with what I was saying in the dream. And when I woke up that morning, I knew... I knew that that hurt, that trauma, because it was traumatic, what I'd gone through, I knew that was behind me. And I knew that I had released that. So you may have a similar experience, or yours may be like the lady I was telling you about earlier, about what she went through, or yours may be very gradual. Or you may just not even, it may be some little things that you think, maybe I've forgiven them, maybe not, but just whatever. I'm just saying, just write it down the best you can. And things will come as you begin to write. And those who you can go to, go to. And just say, you know, I was 
rude or I was harsh or I shouldn't have done this. Whatever it is, you know. It's funny how nobody really has to tell us what we need to apologize for. We know. And for some people, apologizing and admitting that comes easy. But for some people, it does not. And I know there are people that I have really not wanted to lower myself to go and apologize to because, you know, I felt like, well, they started it or it was because of something they had done that made me react in that way. But you know what? I am responsible for what I do. They're responsible for what they do. And I, I can't control what they do, but I can control me. So I'm responsible. And I have to make sure that I keep myself clean and free of unforgiveness. When you get that list, you can do whatever you want. If you get to the end, I still have I still have to create this list. And I still have to go to people every so often and just say, listen, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I apologize. I'm sorry. And you know what? For the most part, most people are very receptive and just are like, oh, I apologized the other day to my aunt just for something that happened five years ago because I was a little bit snarky with her and I was just kind of aggravated and I, I thought, you know, that was rude of me. I need to make sure that she understands that I am sorry. I shouldn't have behaved in that manner. And she said, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> but she, it, I could tell it meant something to her, even though she didn't remember the event, that I would think enough just to at least come and apologize. So forgiveness is very powerful. It's very freeing, just as unforgiveness is very much the opposite of freedom. It's bondage. It weighs us down. And it, it is weight. It will, it will weigh us down and it will keep us. It's like a barrier that keeps us from going the direction that we were meant to go, that you were meant to go. You're meant to have a great life. I know this. So that is really it for today is to make your list. You can do it whatever order you want to. My list just takes longer than when I have to go and apologize or whatever. And it might even be just a little simple little text message. But I would take a little bit of time with your list that says the things that have hurt you. And I would really go deep and I would get into what it is. If you want to write it down, if that makes you feel good or not, you may not even have to write it. Just putting the person's name down might be enough of an indicator of what had happened. So make your list and take a few days to go over it and then burn it or shred it. So I know that I can't wait really to hear what's happened to some people after they've done this, how freeing, because I know that forgiveness is a process. It really is. Sometimes for, with some situations, it does happen very quickly. And then some, we have to work on it. There's some I still have to, you know, keep working and making sure that I have the right attitude. But I'm really excited about this. This is just the first step on drop the weight. So we have about another three times we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about health. We're going to talk about trauma. We're going to talk about just other things that drag us down in life. So I hope that you all have a very merry Christmas and you just have wonderful time with your family. And I look forward to seeing y'all Tuesday. Merry Christmas.